Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on another muggy, crappy, miserable Florida Tuesday. Uh, don't throw virtual tomatoes at the screen or otherwise express outraged anger. Uh, I'm filling in for the very lovely Marianne on a few videos while she and Peter are off gallivanting around enjoying scenery and weather that we're not. Uh, meanwhile, the slog here in swamp-infested southwest Florida continues, so uh, boy do I yearn for the day when it could be me off floating around gallivanting in some lovely locale, you know, with native girls fanning me, sipping whiskey, and just otherwise having fun. But um, anyway, here I am. I'm sweating. I'm dripping. It's miserable. And who cares? So I'll just get going with the car. Uh, obviously now under this uh, channel, Auto House of Naples, I have to be very, very careful. Uh, I can't necessarily continue with the same sort of hateful reviews that I was doing and uh, continue to do over on the Auto Europa channel. Uh, but uh, I will get into some of it. For instance, well, I'll say this. On the Auto Europa channel, I probably would have mentioned that Porsche in their history uh, on their website, their official Porsche website, sort of suspiciously glossed over a few years of their uh, of their past for instance the part where they used Polish forced labor or uh, you know Hitler commissioned his favorite engineer dr. Porsche to make his you know Volkswagen Beetle they, they don't get into that stuff really and of course why would they God, my glasses are fogging up I, I can't even see uh, instead they just talk about milestones that <laughs> they don't get very specific about but of course being this channel I'm probably not going to mention that stuff. I'm just going to go on about the car in general and the Porsche 911 in general, which is, of course, one of the bedrocks, the benchmarks, uh, you know, whatever you will, in, in terms of a long-standing, decades-old uh, produced sports car that rivals anything else in the world. And of course, being rear-engined, it has been since its incarnation, uh, it is uh, somewhat unique in the world of sports cars, because frankly, rear-engined, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I suppose back in 1941, or, you know, whenever the hell they designed the first Porsches, uh, I think they did come out post war you know the engines were lighter the cars were lighter they were all less substantial the rear engine was easily outweighed by the driver it just wasn't it, you know it wasn't that big a deal but of course as cars evolved as they got more heavy more substantial more what have you over the years the rear engines became heavier 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 and that changed the dynamics somewhat and Porsche several times in their history wanted to do away with the 911 and the purists the people who absolutely loved them just forbid it uh, they rose up in anger with pitchforks and torches and uh, made Porsche continue to develop the car uh, the 928, in fact, was supposed to be the replacement for the 911. Well, that did not come to pass, and they continued the development of the 911, and it continues today. Uh, but this was a very substantial change, this 996 model uh, that came out, uh, I want to say 97 in Europe, 98 in the United States. This was the first water-cooled Porsche, and if you wanted to come up with a recipe to make Porsche purists hateful, Add a radiator. That is all they had to do for the Porsche purists to go absolutely batshit. But you have to understand, Porsche had to modernize this thing in a way that would keep it going uh, with the modern world. Air cool just didn't work anymore. By the time the it didn't work when the 993 came out. For God's sake, they, you know, perpetuated it through sheer will alone. But uh, this car had to be water cooled. It had to meet emission standards. It had to be more refined uh, than. Uh, earlier 911s because the market was you know really starting to demand it and uh, of course Porsche had to become profitable uh, which uh, it was struggling while this car was designed and made and it was designed and made to rescue Porsche from the depths of uh, Lotus style uh, bankruptcy and uh, speaking of Lotus, you know, my most favorite guy in the world, Chapman, Colin Chapman, uh, you know, builder of the Lotuses, came up with the greatest recipe ever for car production, and it was called Simplify and then Add Lightness. And I'm very happy to say that Porsche kept that, even with the 996 to a certain extent. But anyway, we'll get into that. So they had to do it. Uh, to do it, they grabbed a company, a little one you might have heard of, called Toyota. And this is another thing that pissed off the purists. Toyota. Oh, my God. 
God, what does that have to do with the 9-11? But they did. They got Toyota uh, experts to come in and help them modernize the Porsche factory, uh, set things up more for, uh, you know, sort of a production that would allow them to cut costs while maximizing profits and upping quality, which, you know, very much did. I'll be honest with you. If I'm going to buy a 911, I really don't mind Toyota having a part of it. I mean, it turns out Toyota builds pretty good cars. I grant you that quite a few of them are intensely boring, uh, but they certainly are good. And if you could mate Porsche's incredible performance, you know, engineering with Toyota's quality, well, you've really got yourself onto something. And uh, in many ways, that's what the 996 accomplished. Uh, so again, first water-cooled, they settled the styling, they developed the Boxster basically to use the same sort of bits, and that was another thing that pissed off the 911 guys, is they'd go out and spend, you know, 80, 90 grand on their 911, and uh, the thing looked like a 40, 50 grand Boxster. Uh, in fact, that became such a thing uh, that the second refresh of the 996, which came out in 02, had to address it. Uh, or Porsche would have been in a lot of trouble. So they changed the headlights on it, which it shared with the Boxster. Uh, they called it the fried egg look, which everybody hated, even though it came from a, a GT2 race car, maybe GT1, don't remember, 96-ish. Uh, but anyway, so then for this 911, the second gen 996, they did uh, bring in the headlights that were on the Porsche turbos and made it look a little bit better, and that soothed the troubled souls of the uh, purists. They also made the engine gurgle and spit and whir a little bit more, which is uh, apparently something 911 people demand. Anyway, let's just get into it. Oh, God, I'm dripping. I can't wait to get some air conditioning going. So uh, by the time this 05 rolled around, the last of the uh, 996s, that little front and rear release stuff had become electric, which is nice when it breaks. Uh, anyway, there you go. So there is a now 3.6 liter flat six. The flat boxer engine is, you know, an historical 911 thing, and uh, they did keep it and kept it, and it's still going today. Uh, but anyway, they, so they bumped it from 3.4 to 3.6. The horsepower went from like 2.98 to 3.25, uh, keeping it ahead of Mercedes, uh, at least the standard S, there's the phone going off, at least the standard SL stuff, and uh, more towards where the XKR and um, what the hell else was uh, Corvette at the time. You know, it didn't quite have their horsepower, but it matched their performance, uh, even though, again, like Porsche people care what's going on in Kentucky. Uh, but there it is. So, you know, flat six, they used a VarioCam Plus timing system. It's basically VVT, uh, variable valve technology that changes the positioning of the valves depending on whether you're at idle or full redline. Uh, it's going to get the most out of either, and that helps it with fuel mileage helps it with power, with torque, and uh, creates a pretty great motor. Uh, they did have that IMS bearing issue, which, you know, I'm going to say was way overblown in terms of uh, the terror because it affected 3% or less of cars. And uh, even in those, it was mostly just garage queens, the kinds of things that got driven 3,000 miles in 12 years or uh, were taken to the track and just brutalized. Most of your average 911s never even thought about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you want it retrofitted, it's not a big deal about 1500 bucks at a shop uh, to use an upgraded bearing. You know, if it's me, I keep an eye on things. I look for, you know, metal shavings in the oil. If I start to see it, I guess I address it then. Uh, but I think any normally driven 911, uh, it's just not going to be something you're ever going to have to worry about. And you can benefit from all the hype uh, that caused these cars to be financially depressed. The 996 became a tremendous bargain uh, because of the overblown stuff on the IMS Barry. And I know I'm going to get flack for that. I don't care. It's true. I, it's absolutely true. And I'll, you know, they fixed it on the uh, on the Cayman because uh, you can't put an IMS in a Cayman. They just made the case uh, unmolestable. So these guys couldn't put a bearing in it. And all of a sudden, the Caymans became okay, even though it used the same basic intermediate shaft. But anyway, I digress. Not really something the average guy has to worry about. Just exercise your Porsche from time to time. Uh, don't let it become a silly garage queen that never goes over 3,000 RPM. And uh, if you are going to go to the track and rag the crap out of it, then do the mods required to make it capable of doing so. Uh, but anyway, on this thing, fantastic. Everything in great shape. Past shop inspection with flying colors. About 60,000 miles on this one. And uh, it's ready to thrill you. And of course, being the second gen 
996. It does give you the whirring and gurgling and uh, machine noises that 911s have to do like those little bumperettes and uh, they did make the exhaust more breathable this year uh, so uh, again to help it boost the horsepower this little guy here with the vents that's a uh, electric spoiler i should say electronic uh, it comes up at speed and uh, pushes the ass end down so you don't get too much lift uh, also they redesigned the rear bumper on the car for the second gen 996 which gave it 40 percent more downforce seems like shocking results from a bumper redesign uh, but anyway they did and it works out great uh, the redesign in the front gave it about 25 percent more downforce so uh, if you're worried about downforce well you can watch one of those mercedes le mans cars doing you know the horizontal flips on the track and that'll tell you why it's important but i don't think that's going to happen even in the old school 996 uh, the wheels they lighten to cut down the unsprung weight uh, they added vented rotors to cut down on fade with braking and uh, again just typical over achieving Porsche engineering stuff that's what they do all right so under the frunk a word that I despise uh, you can see it's got this factory uh, windscreen still with the car it's a nice sort of area to put crap uh, you see I've got some whiskey in there again that's made to keep the coronavirus at bay a couple of shots a day makes that go away well even if it doesn't I don't care it's still nice and uh, everything lovely under the frunk uh, you also get this uh, build sticker I'll try to zero in on that enough to focus so yeah, you can't even see shit but I'll try to take a picture of it put it on the site that little build sticker under the hood is what uh, gives these cars uh, the users the information about how it's been built what options it has okay inside beautiful ebony leather ebony being a nice way of saying black uh, and uh, gorgeous, very supple, very soft, very nice. Uh, even if it does have a little bit of that Teutonic indifference and joylessness uh, that, uh, that you know Jaguar has overcome and Porsche hasn't. They just don't have much of a sense of humor. Uh, you do have semi-useful back seats in here. I mean, they're not fantastic. Your Canadians aren't going to be thrilled back there, uh, but it's way better than a Jag. I mean, that's for damn sure. Uh, you can also turn it into a storage bin by putting those guys down so if you have some infants, you could strap them on top of those things with some bungees or whatnot, and they're probably not going to go anywhere. So not the most comfortable place to be, but eh, it works fine. Get the key out before I hop in. But very nice supportive seats in this car. All right, so we've got the uh, ignition tumbler on the left-hand side, Le Mans style. Fire it up and hear that gurgling, burbling sex. Not as much as they did in the 997, but a little more than the first gen 996s. Yeah, you know, just got a nice little what have you to it. I'm gonna run the top up so you can see how that works. The uh, little tonneau cover goes back. Up comes this uh, folding fabric soft top. Very nice stuff. Hooks itself into the front, pulls itself down. Tonneau comes back and up come the windows. And now with the windows up, I can run the air conditioning a little bit. Thank God. Oh God, it's gonna take me 20 minutes just to dry out. Do a little walk around the car so you can see it with the top up. All right, so there you see a very nice black fabric roof. You can hear that gurgling, burbling flat six at the back. Uh, this top's in great shape. Doesn't have that thing they do where sometimes the fabric folds over uh, the side of that trim. It's kind of annoying. Uh, this has obviously been pretty well kept, and if that wasn't addressed, then it's nice to see one so well preserved. But uh, black fabric roof on the car looks great. Uh, for the second gen 996, they also added a glass rear window with defrost. Lovely stuff. Let me see if I can raise that spoiler so you can get a look at that. I think we can do that manually using, where do they have it? Maybe they don't anymore in this one. I would have thought so. Switch down here. It used to be on the 993s anyway. I don't know. Okay, maybe they made it just fully automatic. You couldn't raise it anymore. Who knows? I'm sure there is a place. I just don't know where the hell it is on this car. That's oh, probably too much wind noise, so let me cut that down. 
Okay, so first for the 996 was a cup holder, although it's absolutely worthless. I don't know what you're gonna fit in this thing. Maybe a 12 ounce can, which is then gonna just drip down onto the center console from condensation, but, uh, but anyway, there it is. So uh, the first Porsche to have a cup holder, uh, I guess at a certain point, Porsche decided even in today's world, you may end up stuck in traffic and you might wanna have a sip of something. Uh, you've got a very neatly laid out instrument cluster, uh, Porsche style, you've got the TAC, biggest dead center, nice, telling me to put on a seat belt, which I guess I'll do. God, this air conditioning feels good. <sighs> I suppose there's people who probably think air conditioning in a Porsche is an abomination. Honestly, they can go to hell. Uh, in addition to the uh, cup holder being a first, the glove box was also a first. You see we've got a manual and a set of books in there. 911 Carrera, all very nice stuff and uh, lovely, ready to go. Uh, there's the instrument cluster again. You've got the tag dead center. You've got a little digital readout beneath it. You have a very small 200 mile an hour speedo. 170, 180, that's probably what you can expect from this thing. It's a bit of a bit of a rocket ship. Uh, you got your voltmeter far left. You got uh, uh, fuel and uh, what is that, oil pressure? It's either oil temp or oil pressure. I guess that's oil pressure here. So that must be a water temp up there. So very nice full gauge display. Very simple, going back to that Lotus uh, simplifying ad lightness thing. You know, this is probably the last Porsche that had a very generic, uh, lovely, simple dash and uh, center console design, uh, which of course is now long gone. I mean, you get in any new 911, it looks like the Starship Enterprise. Uh, this thing really does show its roots back to the original Porsche models. Let's go for a spin. Uh, a buttery smooth six-speed manual gearbox, lovely. Just wait for this. Uh, wait for this gate to open. It's beeping at me. But I mean, it's incredible to shift. You could just flick this thing around. It feels incredibly nice and light and just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I'd run the defrost, but it's just going to make too much damn noise. So uh, we'll just let the window fog up a little bit. The air conditioning. I can't. I can't. I can't not. I'm not driving this thing without air conditioning. I don't think Mary Ann would either. So don't hold that against me. Maybe you should have the top down and Peter would be videoing her lovely little heels. Saying, you know, sorry, you're not gonna get that crap while I'm here. She'll be back. Just relax, she'll be back. <clears throat> oh man, and that induction noise that you get from this, hopefully it'll clear up the, uh, the front <laughs> window. I used to complain about the detailer at Audi Europa being terrible, uh, which he was. Uh, but it turns out that uh, Jimmy in the back of Auto House, whenever Peter's on vacation, uh, his standards drop a little bit and you end up with crappy front windows. I don't know why I'm not a good motivator, but I'm not. I'm just not. People will not work at all for me. I don't know why. They just don't take me seriously. We have this long drive up there. So anyway, yeah, so Porsche kind of glossed over the history of, you know, a certain era and time when they were building Koopal wagons and, uh, you know, tank destroyers and uh, other things for the, um, uh, you know, the war effort, so to speak. Uh, in fact, I think uh, Professor Porsche spent, you know, 20 months in jail after the war for his little part and all the bad stuff that went on and he got out and uh, then he took over Porsche again. His son had been running and while he was in jail, his son built the first true Porsche. Porsche had been kind of a thing that would build uh, cars or help people build cars, but they really didn't have their own. And uh, then uh, Ferry, his son, uh, decided to build a car because he just couldn't find one that he liked. God, if that's not the most arrogant friggin' thing I've ever heard. But uh, so anyway, so he built the first Porsche. And then when his dad got out of jail, they built more Porsches. And uh, the company just kept going that way. Right, let's get out of here. Hopefully with speed or listen to that. Oh my god, the sound. And that is what makes a Porsche a Porsche. Thank God the speed is, I'll just hit the wipers, the hell with it. All right, there they go. Um, that's it. I mean, you can just wind out the gearbox. Uh, the steering is so incredibly precise. I mean, you just, 
instant feel, instant everything. It is power steering, which is odd in a Porsche, I guess, for the old school dinosaur guys, but it's incredible. The steering feel is remarkable. Uh, the car just instantly goes where you point it and how you point it. And unlike those 70s Porsches, you know, if you take too hard a right or you do that trailing throttle oversteer thing, uh, you end up swapping end. It killed a lot of orthodontist wives. Uh, wives, well, all that's long gone by the time this came around. Uh, it took the best of the 993 suspension, added some of the stuff that the 996 improved upon and created a beautifully balanced suspension. Uh, that's amazing for a rear drive, uh, sorry, rear engine, ass engine car in this day and age. Anyway, so there it is. So the 996 Porsche, you know, tragically misunderstood, but now growing very much in terms of value and posterity. Uh, used to be able to get these things for absolute ridiculously bargain prices. Uh, that's over. People realized that the IMS thing was a little bit overblown. Uh, they realized how good these cars are and uh, what a bargain they represented. So the prices started inching upwards, but for a 911, they're still pretty great prices and uh, you can still get yourself a real nice one for not too much money and I highly recommend you do uh, just get you know get one like this that's been nicely maintained and is very proper because what a driving experience I mean in so many ways it's the perfect blend of old Porsche versus new Porsche it's not terribly hard to maintain and uh, God bless Toyota for helping Porsche come up with something uh, that was a little bit easier and cheaper to run than their past products uh, while retaining most of the magic that made Porsche uh, what it is today. So uh, anyway, thank you very much for having a look. Again, this is Bill, guest hosting for the lovely Marianne. Uh, I'm sure some people out there are going to be revolted to hear my voice and want her back, but she's, oh, she's on the way. She'll be back. Don't worry. Don't worry your pretty little heads. She'll be back before you know it. And uh, I appreciate you guys having a look. Thank you. And we'll see you with the next one. Take care.